Welcome to In and Around St. Johnsbury. I'm Susan Cherry, and in the studio today, Nick Angeloni. Welcome. Thank you. We have some interesting things coming up. I know a lot of people have been talking about uh, connectivity, broadband, and now we have something that's actually appearing at town meeting called a Communication Union District. That's right. And uh, we're here today to talk about that and maybe answer some questions that people have. Hopefully. So welcome. Glad Thanks. to have you here. Glad to be here. Um, what got you interested in, in getting broadband to the region? So I work in technology. I've worked as a, uh, on a software team for an educational nonprofit for 10 years now. Um, when I first started there, I was doing programming, which is something that I could actually do fairly locally on my computer, and it didn't require a very good internet connection. But the longer I've been there, the more um, I've been drifting into uh, managerial work, which requires um, a better connection uh, for video conferencing and stuff like that. I was living in uh, Rygate, uh, just 15 minutes south of St. Johnsbury, and um, our internet connection was really poor. We, we loved living there, but it was expensive and the connection was really bad. So I started looking around for people who were trying to do something about this. I remember connecting with the folks who were doing Newberry. Have you heard of that mm -hmm. effort down in Newberry? They've got a slightly different model that they're working on to bring better internet connection to, um, to the town of Newberry. Um, and eventually I came across this working group, the Northeast Kingdom uh, Broadband Working Group that was being driven by Evan Carlson and Catherine Sims. Um, mm -hmm. They had an event at uh, Due North um, in uh, Lindenville. Right, so Evan Carlson is, um, is the coordinator, the entrepreneur in residence, they call mm -hmm. it, at Due North. And then uh, Catherine Sims is the director of the NEK uh, Correct. collaborative. Right? Yes. So, yep. so people bring up to speed here. Yep. So I went to one of their events for this effort um, and I was immediately struck. So I had done an, a bunch of research and gotten myself fairly annoyed at the efforts that had been that had been underway so far. So for example, I did a bunch of research on the on the state website and mm. uh, did some back of the napkin calculations and I think we as a state spent something like 500 million dollars over the last 10 years, which has primarily gone to corporate organizations like um, Verizon or Comcast to encourage them to build out um, better internet infrastructure. Um, but in reality, it's uh, very difficult to hold them accountable to that. And um, areas like the Northeast Kingdom, I think, have suffered um, because of that strategy. Yeah. So what I really liked about what I saw with this new working group is um, first of all, they had some backing from the legislature. Where there's some new legislation that helped make this possible. Mm -hmm. um, and as part of that, it is a very low risk and um, attractive way to try to um, get a community um, effort underway to address the problem. I, I think it's interesting when, you, when you're talking about that. The state's been talking about this for a long time. Yes. And, you know, how do you do that? Do you give the money to somebody else or do you let the people in the town, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a big proponent of community members being engaged. And, uh, you know, I, I think this is an interesting angle that the community does have the resources and the people to make some decisions around what they want and what they want to see. I can remember some of the early conversations around, you know, putting things up in church towers and tall buildings in town, wherever they are. But it wasn't ever really the community members. It was a small intersection with members of the parish or whatever that was, you know, getting the tower. But this is a new approach. Yeah, it's fundamentally about um, it's fundamentally about creating uh, like a united block of towns mm -hmm. that are driving this effort in a way that would be much harder for smaller groups or for corporate organizations to push forward. Mm -hmm. The reality is that the, the um, landscape that we live in, while it's very beautiful, does not lend itself to um, high-speed internet infrastructure. Um, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And while there are plenty of examples of communities that have done this successfully, the profit margins in rural areas like ours tend to be much smaller than they are in urban districts. So for mm -hmm. example, what 
what happened with many of the places, um, with many of the efforts that came before with that $500 million is that, um, uh, you know, industries like Comcast or Fairpoint or Consolidated would find rural pockets that were close to more urban areas and sort of build out the sort of least expensive places that they could, which still qualified as underserved um, residences. Um, because fundamentally they're looking to maximize their bottom line. And while there are profit margins in areas like ours, those profit margins are very small. And so naturally they're going to gravitate to the places where those margins are largest. And that fundamental dynamic, I think, makes it, makes it very difficult for any kind of corporate strategy to work, whereas a community-based effort has a, has a different focus. The focus is on providing a basic service to the area, and it should be financially responsible, it should be in the black, but um, it doesn't have to have that same sort of narrow focus on maximizing the bottom line. I, I think just looking at some of the assumptions that we're making as community members, too, I mean, you said basic needs and basic, you know, the, the utilities. There was a time when electricity was just coming into Vermont, yes. you know, and, and we had a hard time grappling with that's a basic need, everybody should have it. Yes. The infrastructure includes, you know, water, sewer, electric, and thinking about what does our community need. Broadband is now, internet connectivity yes. is becoming a basic service. Yes. And that's a whole different assumption than yes. where we've been. And we'll, you know, so we're talking about economic development. We're talking about bringing in enticing small businesses, large businesses to the area. Yeah. How important is it that we have that as our basic assumption that that's part of our infrastructure? I mean, personally, I think it's critical. And in addition to the addition to the um, examples that you're citing, I would say we have an aging population. Um, better inf internet infrastructure. Um, enables an option of helping people to age in place, right? Mm -hmm. If we had infrastructure in place, there could be partnerships with hospitals and other long-term uh, long care um, mm -hmm. agents who would be able to have reliable access to people aging in their homes, which would enable them to do uh, less expensive, better quality care for people at home. There are also opportunities for partnership where we could be um, doing a better job of expanding um, uh, emergency services. Sometimes there are pockets of areas where emergency services have like dead spots where they have difficulty contacting each other. Um, this is also something that could feasibly be addressed if we were to have a robust uh, high-speed in, uh, internet infrastructure in the area. Well that's interesting. They, they have been talking about rural health care mm -hmm. for a while now in the state and and the rural health care connectivity is really important. They're doing telemedicine, yeah. you know, and, and the rural development agencies, you know, the Health Resource Administration, it's really looked at telemedicine as the, the just a new resource for very rural areas. Yes. Uh, we can't connect with doctors and maybe connecting at home with somebody who needs to get medical advice while they're in their home, as you mentioned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it is critical and it's going to become more critical and more sort of a baseline um, in terms of being able to be an active um, community in in our nation. I think the other component of it that really um, gets me fired up is the way that our community in particular has been underserved. So 16 of the 20 um, poorest served communities in Vermont, the poorest served uh, towns in Vermont, are located in the Northeast Kingdom. Mm -hmm. The state average is something like, um, I think three quarters of the state has access to what is federally defined as a high-speed uh, broadband connection, which is uh, 25 uh, megabits per second download, three megabits per second upload. Uh, only less than half of the Northeast Kingdom residents have access to that connection. So um, that, that type of disparity really for me highlights the fact that we're, we're, not, we're not being served well by the efforts that have been made so far, and it, I really would like to see something done about it. Right. There's really two streams, aren't there? I mean, the people who currently live here are not getting the services that other places in the state are getting, and then enticing businesses for our own economic uh, vitality yep. to come into the area. And, and individual workers. I yeah. mean, I will say, like, having been in the tech industry for a while, there is a, a growing sector of folks who are are interested in tech work, but that's not, you know, they don't want to live in San Francisco. They don't want to live in downtown Boston. Like they, they are willing to make some sort of compromises to have a better overall quality of life. Mm -hmm. And the Northeast Kingdom has so much to offer. Um, I love living here. This place is amazing. 
Uh, and I, I feel like if we did a better job of improving this infrastructure, we, it would, it's a long road to hoe. We would, I mean, there would need to be like a marketing campaign and things like that, but it, it's sort of a, a baseline requirement upon which we could build such a marketing campaign to be enticing um, uh, younger, younger families who are in the tech industry to come here because there's a lot, there's a lot here that I think would be appealing to that demographic. And I think you bring up a good point. I mean, it's, it's really our aging population. People are leaving for larger cities, but now we have something to offer. The Northeast Kingdom has good recreation, good food, beautiful scenery, delightful air to breathe, water to drink. We, we have it all. But we need to bring our young people back. Mm -hmm. And what they're looking for is a business where they can maybe work remotely or they can connect with other people at a higher rate of speed that the big cities are offering them. So, so what kinds of decisions are going to be the, the community going to be grappling with? I mean, as, if the community has this ability to meet, talk about it, figure it out, um, we're not seeing an overnight no. delivery. No. So thank you. <laughs> no. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, it's really important to me that we manage expectations for folks. This is an investment in our community. This is not a panacea. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. Voting yes on this uh, next week is not going to mean that you get high-speed internet next year, um, let alone in three years. Mm -hmm. um, I want to double down on sort of what I was saying earlier about this effort needs to be fiscally responsible or else it's just going to fail. Like this, this is an investment in our, in our, the entire Northeast Kingdom community. So the, this vote is very much just an initial step. The first thing that we have to do is form the entity. Because until that entity is formed, like right now it's just a bunch of us who, volunteers who are in this working group who feel passionately about it and would like to see something get done, it's not appropriate for us to be making um, uh, momentous decisions on behalf of the community when this is supposed to be a community effort. So the first step really needs to be forming the entity before anything else happens. We are doing a bunch of prep work. We've uh, um, uh, partner, partnering with NVDA to sort of get initial grants. and. Um, uh, Catherine and Evan have been amazing at sort of helping to push this effort forward in terms of doing some pre-feasibility studies. The intent is after the town meeting day vote, the towns that have voted yes to join the CUD are going to join together and, uh, and, and form a, we're going to get bored. Each town would, would um, present uh, one representative, so each town would get one representative to sit on the board. That board would then sit down and go through and review and then settle on bylaws for how, how the entity would work, what, what the rules are that they're going to agree to in terms of operating. Mm -hmm. um, and then ideally, we're going to present the board with the research that we've been doing. So without making any sort of going through any one-way doors at this point, we're trying to do as much research as we can to understand what, um, what the variables are that the board should be considering. Um, what some potential decision points could be or um, grant opportunities in particular because there are some major grant opportunities that are coming up rather quickly and so the intent is to try to help bring the board up to speed as soon as possible so they can make some decisions about how to push forward. Um, well, the fact that several towns, I mean, how many towns are we talking about if they all vote yes? We have 27 towns that are putting this on the ballot. Right. So if, if, if we get 27 communities involved in this, that really is a powerful statement to any kind of funding source. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just say that we have collaborated. I, I, I work in an organization where we collaborate all the time. Yes. And just being able to partner with other organizations and other people who are interested in the same thing is a strength. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I think it's a huge statement. And it's not just a, actually, it's not just a statement to the funders, it's also a statement to the, um, to the, to the corporate actors who are in this industry right now. I mean, I think um, there is no guarantee that this effort will work. I mean, it's possible that we do a feasibility study and the answer is like, actually, the return on investment is not as much as we hoped and maybe it's not such a great idea. That's one possibility. I don't particularly think that's likely, but it is possible. In the worst case scenario where this doesn't work out, that pressure that we're exerting um, for the corporate actors to be like, oh, wait a minute, um, it, we're going to lose this business if we don't if we don't do something different. Mm -hmm. 
that is a positive thing. Um, I think that's, that's necessary at this point because they're not moving fast enough. The thing that excites me the most is, is really the community engagement. Yes. And that's, of course, I agree. You know, that, that's amazing. And putting it on the town ballot for a vote at the town meeting day, um, first of all, you're advertising to everybody that you exist, that this is something that's an entity you've been meeting, you've been thinking about it. Uh, it's not a fly-by-night operation. You, you've got people who have actually done a little bit of you know, back work yes. to get this ready. And, and it's been impressive, I mean, I have to say, you know, going to the select board, going to having your own meetings at, you know, 142 Eastern. Yep. Those are great, and those are wonderful ways of getting it out to the public. But now it's actually going to be in the public's hands. Yes. And I think that's a, that's a powerful statement. I, I do, too. I mean, I'm really excited about yeah. it. Um, and I, I, hope, I hope that others are as well. Um, I'm really optimistic about what things look like um, coming up after town meeting day. It's... Uh, it's, I really want this for the community. Mm -hmm. I really think that we deserve better and that we can have better. Right, and we can make decisions together. Mm -hmm. And those are the kinds of things. We get the research, we get the information in front of us. All the towns have a representative on this board. Yes. They get to chew on it, think about it, make good decisions. Yes. And, and really to have our legislature say, you know, it's time that we, you know, honor the community members. Yes. To say that they, they can do this. Yes, and I mean, I will say um, we have a leg up actually over some other communities in Vermont in the sense that we already have some substantial infrastructure in place in this area that is just actually not being fully leveraged. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of what is called dark fiber, so it's like somebody got a grant, they laid a bunch of fiber, which was the sort of backbone of what um, this sort of effort would be grown on. Um, through throughout regions in the Northeast Kingdom, but then we just couldn't get anybody to take advantage of it. Um, there are potential partnerships with electric um, electric companies, Velco, um, that we're looking into. Um, in addition to which, uh, I think it's the Northeast uh, Northeast uh, Regional. Um, there's an entity that has a um, owns some assets up in the northern end of the Northeast Kingdom that that. Um, uh, we're hoping that, that, that it's possible to partner with. None of these things are, are, are settled or, or set in stone. They may or may not work out, but there's a lot of actual physical assets already available in this area that if we're able to form the right partnerships would give us, um, would give us uh, a sort of immediate sort of leg up in terms of getting this effort off the ground. And this would give them the vehicle to talk with each other. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yep. Get, bring everybody to the table. Yep. So there are some towns that don't have this on the ballot. Um, is it? Are they able to join later? Yes. So, um, and I think probably the primary reason they're not on the ballot is just because we didn't know it. Like the, the folks of us who were trying to organize maybe didn't know anybody in in those towns. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had a very good return rate in terms of presenting this to select boards. Most folks were um, able to see um, what a uh, exciting opportunity this was and, and jumped on board pretty quickly. Um, any town within the Northeast Kingdom um, that does not have this on the ballot this year, um, after the entity forms, I believe the select board is able to um, pass pass a, um, they're able to have a, a vote, yeah. right, yeah. a referendum yeah. to, to join the CUD um, afterwards if they'd like to. So it's community union district, CUD, it's on the ballot. Yep, it's the Northeast towns. Kingdom Broadband CUD. Okay, excellent. And it's a vote A vote of yes is for your town to join, which means you're not making any financial commitment. Um, there's no risk to the um, taxpayer at all. Um, all you're agreeing to do is send a representative to be on this board and help have a voice in what this entity decides to do. I don't see any downside to this. I, I don't either. <laughs> If you have questions, though, I am, I, I do have, a, I'm not sure exactly when this airs, but I have a, um, uh, an informational meeting that's happening uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday at 142 Eastern at 530. People are more than welcome to come um, and ask questions, and I'll try, I, I'll do my best to answer them. There's a few other um, events in the area. I believe there's a joint Rygate Groton one that I'm aware of, and there may be some others. Mm -hmm. Folks are trying to, volunteers are trying to um, create opportunities for people to come and ask questions if they do have some. How does somebody get in touch with you? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, you're welcome to email me. Um, there's also uh, um, perhaps the best way to um, get in contact with the group in general is uh, the Northeast Kingdom Collaborative, so um, okay. Catherine Smith's 
SIMS organization has a, a page for the Northeast Kingdom broadband CUD effort. Um, and uh, you can email her or Evan or myself. There may be an additional contact email on that web page. Okay, or um, stop in at Due North perhaps. Totally, to talk to with stop Evan. in at Due mm -hmm. North and talk to Evan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, this has been very informative. Good. And I really appreciate I'm glad. it. Glad I've had yeah. fun. And so I hope people do reach out to you, ask questions if they still have questions, uh, get in touch with your select board, tell them that you'd like to see them consider this if it's not on the ballot. And I really appreciate you talking with us My today. pleasure. Thank you so much okay. for having me. Right. Well, this is Susan Cherry, and we really want to thank you for joining us today and learning a little bit more about what's going on in and around St. Johnsbury. You have a good day. Bye-bye.